I'm back! Hey there and welcome to my channel. This is Foggy Fiction and I am Haley. I'm a writer living with mental illness, doing my best to show that mental health does not dictate talent or worth, and hoping to encourage others to chase their dreams. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I try to post one to two videos a week, usually centered around things related to writing, reading, and mental health, but you know, sometimes I veer off topic or disappear for three weeks, and that's okay too. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about ways that I pull myself out of the creative slump and get back to doing things, because as you might have guessed, I've been in a creative slump. That's why I've been gone for as long as I have. Also because of some health issues and also because of some mental health issues, but I haven't really had the urge to create lately. So in today's video, like I said, I'm repeating myself, I'm doing a good job here. I'm just going to give you, I think it's five ways? No, six ways. I'm going to give you six ways that I pull myself out of that creative slump and get me back into creating beautiful things. My cat just ran in from her cat door outside, so she's probably going to join us. Yep, there she is. Now, I'm going to cover six things, like I said, or that's what my script here tells me I'm covering, because I do script these videos when I make the list, because if not, then I can't stay on topic. Let's get to it. Number one, I watch YouTube videos on all things related to writing and publishing. This is pretty much an everyday thing for me. The moment that I sit down here at my desk, I turn on my PlayStation and I start up YouTube. I follow most of the big author tubers as well as a bunch of other smaller channels I stumbled across, either here on YouTube or on other social medias. Seeing other people talk about any stage of being a writer or author just gets me excited about the possibilities in my own future as a writer. Especially when I'm seeing people I've been following since before they published talking about their first books coming out. That's so incredibly motivating most of the time. I won't lie, some days it makes me incredibly depressed that I'm not there yet, but you know, that's okay. It's, I think I'm pretty sure that's part of it. That's also why this isn't the only thing on the list. Number two, participating in events. NaNoWriMo and Camp NaNoWriMo are the first ones that pop into my mind, but they certainly aren't the only ones out there. For me, having set goals that I'm working toward with a bunch of other people, pushing each other forward and rooting each other on, it is always a big motivator. One of the big things for me related to this is the NaNoWriMo website's word count tracker in the badge system. You type in the project that you're working on, not the actual project that you're writing, just you know, like what it is you're working on, and your word count goal, and the website calculates how many words you should strive to reach each day in order to meet your overall word count goal by the end of the month. They have little badges you earn uh, as you reach certain milestones, and there's also a huge community of writers and resources right there on the site. Plus, they have discounts on resources, resources such as Scrivener and Pro Writing Aid also available on the site. Some of those discounts are actually even better if you win Nano, even or Camp Nano as well, but there's still discounts available to everyone even if you don't. That's actually how I got Scrivener, which I use to script all of my videos and keep it organized. If you see me looking away from the camera repeatedly, it's because I'm looking at my Scrivener page right now, reading off the script that I have typed up for this. There's something about seeing that goal on the Nano site, watching my progress as I work toward it, and seeing those little badges pop up as I earn them that drives something really competitive in me and makes me want to write. And like I said, there are other events than just Nano, and it's worth seeing what else is out there. You, you might just stumble across your new favorite motivator. You never know. Number three, reading craft books. This one is definitely along the same vein as number one, but I feel it can be more in-depth and feel like a more personal experience when it's just you diving into a book. I'm always looking to learn more. I believe that you can never stop learning, so I have a long list of craft books on my TBR. As I'm reading them, I always find myself coming up with ways to utilize that information as I'm learning it. I have saved the cat to thank for helping me figure out the big problems that were holding me back with my first book. As I was reading, ideas were just popping into my head and I couldn't get them written down fast enough. And then I started coming up with ideas for new stories, and I just felt like that fire was lit in my soul again. The one I feel burning when I think about how much I want that dr this dream of being a successful author to come true. My top two recommendations are Save the Cat Writes a Novel. I know everyone recommends that, but there's a reason why everyone does. Or, not everyone, you know what I mean though. And Self-Editing for Fiction Writers. I don't see that one recommended near enough, but it is... Amazing. I love that book, and it is written by actual editors, so I would say that's, you know, pretty good reason to, to read it, or at least I think so. But I've read a handful more, and I've got like 50 others on my list. 
I will say though, there can be too much taking in um, craft books and um, also this applies to videos and lectures and everything too. You can take in too much of that. So I guess just kind of learn where your limits are, hopefully before you reach that point where you've kind of overwhelmed yourself and overloaded your mind with so much differing information that you don't know where to go. I have friends who refuse to read craft books or watch videos and that's fine. I have friends who are like me and take in a plethora of them and that's fine. You know, you just gotta figure out where you fall on that. But also keep in mind that the information that you're receiving from these things are based on the experience of the person telling it to you which means that their writing style, their experiences, are not necessarily going to be the same as what you might have. So just keep that in mind and know that if what you're doing or what you like to do or what's working for you isn't the same as them, or if you try what they're doing and it doesn't work for you, that's not a bad thing. You know, everyone's different. But I do think that it's good to learn more. And those two books especially helped me a lot with pacing, grammar, and most of all, what to cut out from my books. So just a little tidbit there. Moving on now. So number four, and this is a weird one, create a character on D&D Beyond. I'm not saying you have to use the character for anything or even that you have to use that site specifically. I'm sure there are others that do the same thing. That's just the one that I've used for my actual D&D characters that I've played with in campaigns. What I'm saying is that when I was getting into D&D the last few years and we were using that site to create and control our characters for our campaigns, it had me really wanting to write a fantasy novel. It had me wanting to create more and more characters for any type of story, really. And it's such an easy way to get you using your creative brain when all of the steps for creating a full character with a backstory and everything are right there on that site with answers to choose from. I fully recommend you giving it a try. You might end up with characters you never use, sure, but they also might open your eye, your mind to a brilliant story anyway. Or you might start playing D&D, you know, win-win. <laughs> so number five. Join a writing group. It doesn't have to be in person, especially not nowadays. You can find groups on Facebook and the NaNoWriMo forums, on Discord, which you can also find through Nano. that's how I found, found mine, and many author, author tubers, including myself, have Discords or other groups available to supporters via Buy Me A Coffee, in my case, or Patreon, or Ko-Fi. Or sometimes you can just find it on Facebook. I am part of a Discord that I found on Nano that I absolutely love. We encourage each other, give feedback, do write-ins, events, and just chat with each other. It's amazing how motivating it is to be part of a group of other writers cheering each other on. I should have listed this as number one, honestly, because my little Discord family makes me feel like I'm not alone on this journey, and it's a lot easier to take those steps when you're not the only one doing it. Also, just to drop these two things, I work with an alpha reader and I consider her and my regular betas one of my writing groups. And I do, as I mentioned, have my own personal Discord that's available to members supporting me on my Buy Me A Coffee. It's very slow going right now, to be extremely honest, but it has to start somewhere. And if you want to support me as a member or not, the link is down below. And number six, just start writing. I know this one probably has you rolling your eyes and thinking, yeah, that's kind of the problem. But hear me out. You don't have to write anything good. You don't have to write anything creative or that might be used in any way. But getting yourself to put your hands on that keyboard or pencil to paper and start using your words does a lot more than you think. Write a blog post, script a video for YouTube or TikTok, vent in your journal about how you want to be writing but can't figure out what to write about, find some prompts on Pinterest and have at it, do some really bad stream of consciousness. Any of these or something else, pick one and throw five minutes at it. Then reward yourself with some relaxing time, maybe a snack, and do it again tomorrow. It's insane how much that helps. This video that I'm reading the script from right now is actually one that I wrote during Camp Nano, and it got me writing a bunch of other, scripting a bunch of other videos that I'm excited to eventually have for you guys. And then it got me working on a little short story thing that I kind of gave up on because I realized it wasn't going to be something that I wanted to do. But it also got me to where I am now, where I'm actually working on revising my second book again. And I'm going to go back to my first one later, but I started my second book again, and I have, like, brain dumped ideas for, like, four or five new stories. Like, I'm coming up with new stories again. And I think a lot of that has to do with just the fact that I pushed myself to start writing again, even if it wasn't anything good or anything that I was going to use later, like those short stories. I'm not going to use them but it got me writing. So yeah, that's the six things that I use to help me pull me out of a creative slump, 
most specifically talking about writing. I do other creative things and not all of these are going to help with those, but it's an author tube channel so I think you knew that when you came here. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you think of these or if you have any suggestions for me of things that have helped you because I'm always looking for new suggestions. Like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're interested in following my very clumsy journey as a writer living with mental illness, and enjoy the happy moments. Oh, and sorry that I've been gone for so long, but you know, hopefully I'll stick around this time for more than just, you know, one video a month. <laughs> sorry.